Fram danser en haukal fager og blå med gullring om håret som fløymer. For generations, the people of Norway's western fjords have been closely tied to their environment. Steep mountains rise out of the water. Waterfalls roar down rocky cliffs. And clouds hang in the balance between the treetops and sky. Here in Aurlandsfjord, a few hours from the city of Bergen, the environment is powerful and humbling. But the villages, standing in contrast, have a small, quaint charm. Undredal, a town of about 60 people, is no exception. It's a place steeped in tradition, yet heavily influenced by tourism and development. A village where goats far outnumber people. Providing one of the major sources of the town's livelihood. Because we have a strong tradition of farming with goats and cheese production. As well as one of the main draws for tourists from far and wide. The village is well known for two objects, the goat cheese and the church. It's good to meet you guys. You know, you're famous around here for your milk. There's a rich history to unlock in Undredal <laughs> that extends beyond the famous goat cheese. That's the sound of 700 years of history. A history that's evolved rapidly in recent decades. Definitely, there's a lot more tourism here. Before 1988, the village had no road connection. The fjord was our connection to the world, you know. The communication was by boat. As Undredal has opened up more and more, so has its need to strike a balance between embracing modern development and maintaining its local character. It's an ongoing effort, but one locals continue to fight for. That's very important. We need to have a balance between the local people and the visitors. This is Undredal, a village of many contrasts. A place that continues to change, while in many ways, staying the same. So we have to make, uh, what you call it in English, schedule for uh, this week. In a village like Undredal, locals can teach you some things you'd never find in a history book. Nowadays, do you know everyone who lives here? Oh yes, of course, <laughs> you do. Some you know uh, too good. <laughs> <laughs> Life Inga Underdal is one of those people. Are you proud to be from Underdal? Absolutely. I am. His family's ties to the village go back generations. So deep, he even shares a last name with the town. People take the name from the Willish name. In modern times, his family was perhaps best known for running Underdal's one grocery store. A village institution Leifinga inherited from his father over 30 years ago. Well, he took over the grocery store here in, after the last World War in 1946, after his uncle, who started it in 1919. Continuing the store's legacy was a big reason for him to return home in 1990. Well, my mother was ill of cancer, and my father uh, was wondering if he should close the grocery store. When I first took it over, it was only this part of the building. Leifinga came home at a major turning point in Undredal's history. Soon after, a road connection made the village accessible by car for the first time. I feel that I should be a part of developing the village after we got the road connection. He was one of many locals advocating for this historic infrastructure project. Without the road, I think uh, this community wouldn't survive. With the road came more tourists, wanting to see the area's deep fjords and steep mountains. And here you have the famous brown cheese. And hoping to sample Undredal's staple product. Traveling from U U.S., from Australia, uh, everywhere, just to buy and taste this cheese. Brown and white goat cheese, coming from an unbroken tradition that has lasted for generations. So we have the traditional knowledge about it, you know? and quite many others have lost it. A tradition, Leifinga says, that's connected to the steep terrain surrounding Undredal and the unique ability of these guys to navigate it. It's because of the landscape, you know. So, because it's so steep that goat farming is the best to use the resource in the landscape. As well as the historical need to create a product that could last. If you take a look up here, you can see a summer farm, a picture of a summer farm up there. 
and you know there is not so many customers up there. <laughs> so they have to have products you could keep. Without Undredal's goat farmers and dairy producers, there is no cheese. Oh, it's a peanut. <laughs> but there's also got to be someone to sell it, both in town and beyond. Cutting the cheese, labels on, carrying the cheese, selling the cheese. Of course, we eat the cheese. For years, that's been the job of the owner of the village store. Well, we had a quite close relation between uh, us who have the grocery store, which was the retailer of the cheese, with them who produce it, the farmers. That's given Life Inga a front row seat to goat cheese production and history in Undredal. If you have a longer maturing of the cheese, you get a more flavor in the cheese. Knowledge he would use to help develop a new offer for Taurus called Eldhusa. Uh, here you can see some illustrations of the process, how we make the cheese, you know? A center for tasting and learning about Undredal's cheese tradition. I think when I opened here in 99, uh, I think I was one of the first who started to use storytelling as an important part of the product. But as Life Inga has gotten older, he's helped pass along this knowledge to a new generation. A generation that includes Geir Andre Gilbu, the new owner of the village store, who took over with his wife in 2019. Life Inga didn't want the shop to close down because uh, we're afraid Underdal will die out, people will uh, move closer to the center of bigger villages and so on. It's not hard to spot Geir Andre in town, driving around on his signature ATV. It's how he gets back and forth between the shop and Underdal's cheese factory, a cooperation between a few of the village's main goat farming families. So welcome into Underdal's third history. We're going to show you around. So the milk starts in, in these uh, tanks, pumped into this, and here we make all the curd. The curd from the milk is used to make Undredal's white cheese, which is then cut, stacked, and pressed to get rid of the whey. After this white cheese production, there is a liquid left. You can see here when you press in the curd, there is spread out a liquid. That's the whey. And that we use to make brown cheese. To turn whey into cheese, it needs to be boiled for hours to get to the right consistency. No electricity, heating by wood, a traditional way. So during that long boiling, it's a caramelizing of the natural sweetness in the milk. So therefore it's brown and tastes a bit sweet. With both the curd and the whey being put to use, Undredal producers make the most of what the goats give them. So in this way of production, we use the whole resource of the milk. Don't spill anything. Once the brown cheese is shaped, it's left to cool and harden. Tomorrow morning, she will take out, make them nice. Until it looks like this. So this is made uh, yesterday. Meanwhile, the newly shaped white cheese begins a much longer journey in the aging room. So that's white cheese is from Undredal. With maturing comes a stronger taste. We got the fresh cheese, two to three months old. It's new mugen. Then we got the medium old cheese, medium matured. It's three to six months. Then we got the old one, it's six to 12 months. Then we got the really old one, it's more than one year old. Something special about Undredal's white cheese is it's not pasteurized. If you pasteurize the milk, uh, that means you boil up the milk, you will destroy the taste of what the animals are eating in the area. That's the way they've done it for generations. But, yeah. but resident David Underdal says keeping that tradition alive didn't come easy. Because here in Undredal was unpasteurized cheese. And then the authorities, they decided uh, that this was illegal. In the late 20th century, locals say the Norwegian government came out with new rules of production. Brown cheese was legal to sell because it's boiled, but not the white. Thus began a long battle between the food authority and many local dairy farmers, one of whom was David's mother, Undredal's Pascal Baudonnel. She learned to make uh, cheese here a French woman who moved to the area as a young girl. And then she uh, worked on summer farms around and she ended up here in this summer farm. Pascal would play a key role in helping to develop Undredal's cheese production. There you can see white cheese inside the salt water. While fighting to keep its traditional methods, like using unpasteurized milk, alive. And in the end, our cheese factory 
together with some others were the first ones to be allowed to do this, like almost like on a dispensation, but it, it, it started this revolution. It's a cheese with a whole lot of history. So here you can see I ordered the white cheese. As well as a major source of local pride. The cheese that the people are buying in your store, this is literally coming straight from there. Yeah, that's what we call short travel food. Short travel indeed. Less than three kilometers, to be precise. So in here is the storage of the brown cheese. Back at the shop, the final touches are made in the basement. Now we dip in box, then we dip the other way in box, so it's sealed. So this cheese you can keep for six months. Next comes the slicing. Packaging. Vacuum sealing. And labeling. Done by hand, one piece at a time. We are proud of the product, so we put our soul into our cheeses. Then it's outside, up the hill, and just around the corner. This is short travel food. A short journey, but a long process before making it into the store. Hello. And reaching its final destination on the shelf. It's a lot of work. Yes, it's a lot of work. What makes you keep doing it? The passion for the area, and especially our history. While goat farming and cheese production are an important part of that heritage, it's not the only piece of Underdal history worth preserving. The village is also home to a small, historic stave church. A plaque outside says it was built almost 900 years ago, around the year 1147. You can see we got four legs, a little bit angled here. That was the bell tower. According to Geir André, it's been in continuous use since it was built. So we think that was the master painter who painted this side. Filled with designs, paintings, and artifacts that provide a glimpse into hundreds of years of history. While Undradal is still inspired by its past, it's fought hard to avoid getting stuck in it. I think it was, would have been very difficult to continue just with the traditional activities, not developing anything else. In an era where people are concentrating in larger towns and bigger cities, Leifinga fears small villages are too often overlooked or forgotten. There is so much focus on the centers. You know, at the center of this municipality, Auland, have all the focus. In Undredal, the population is now half what it was at the turn of the century, a decrease that contributed to the village school closing in 2006. We had probably around 130 people living here when I grew up, and now we're around 60, so it's quite different. Despite these demographic challenges, many locals argue the village is still very much alive in large part because it's chosen to adapt and develop itself while finding ways to preserve its traditions. Because all villages have to, have to change, you know. What is the, the best of our culture to, to take with us in the future, you know, and leave the rest? An important part of this development has been leaning into the opportunity tourism offers. That is a big part of the reason that that we're surviving as a place. It's the tourism. Marketing village culture, history, and tradition as a key part of the product. Because of tourism, we still have a shop that we can have open all year round. Without the summer rush, Geir André wouldn't be able to keep his doors open for locals during the quiet winter. So that's uh, life in his cup, because he's a local. <laughs> so you need to have activity happening here. And the shop is quintessential because that's how you meet people. Without it, many agree the whole village would suffer. Because the shop is not just a shop, it's like the heart of the town. So if it goes away, the town dies. Tourists are also key to sustaining the town's one restaurant. A business Leifinga started is an expansion of Eldhuse, the village's cheese center. What they did before was already great, and I'm going to try to do even better on that. Which he recently handed off to a new set of managers, including Maxime Rieu. That's what we try to, to be, like the social link where people can come and gather. 
and the real objective will be to, so to do that during summer for the, the tourists and then become more like the local place for the locals during winter. But while tourism brings important economic benefits, residents recognize it can also come with disruptions. You know, when, this, when we have a small area, we, don't, we cannot have so much traffic that it's totally crowded here. That's not the profile we want to have of the village. Our land, the municipality Undredal is a part of, is a popular destination for travelers in large part because of the famous Flom Railway at the end of the fjord. While just under 2,000 people live in the municipality, its commercial accommodations recorded well over 200,000 guest nights in 2022. We are a very famous area, like we have a lot of tourists coming down. 150,000 of those guest nights were during the summer months of June, July, and August alone. Maybe the biggest issue could be the amount of people who come here at the same time. Of course, not all of those visitors come through the small village of Undredal, but locals still stress the need to strike a careful balance. We don't want to be rich a lot of money because of the tourists, uh, because then we destroy the area. Between the economic gains of tourism and maintaining the authentic identity of their town. It seems like maintaining that identity is something you need to continue to fight for or else it goes away. Yeah, I think so, you have to. According to Leifinga, getting the town this far has indeed taken a village. The reason we are on Rudal as a, I would say, quite alive village today is um, a job out of um, quite many people, and also not only they who grew up here, absolutely not. But as his generation approaches retirement. I can relax now when I'm sitting here instead of all the time being should be somewhere somewhere else. <laughs> they begin to hand over the reins of the institutions they help build. Every community needs new generations continuously. If not, they're gonna die out. So I think um, I think the role of the old generation is to let the new generation <laughs> take over, you know, which I think is happening. It's a new generation of goat farmers. I was afraid just a few years ago that um, the next generation didn't want to keep going, take over that way of farming. But you see now, they do. Entrepreneurs? Basically, I would like to carry on all the work that Leifinger did, because he is like the face of this place and he is like the one that really set it up. And I just want to continue in the same direction, but adding as well my own touch. Community development advisors? I see Undral maybe as a town that have to look back at how things were before. Maybe we have less traffic on the roads and more traffic on the fjord. Politicians and others who share hope and optimism for the village's future. People before us created something you can build on. Looking for new solutions to the town's current challenges. We have to keep the uh, the local farmers, we, we have to keep them. While holding on to the history and traditions that make Undredal, Undredal. I'm proud of being from Undredal, you know. It's like, it's like my identity in a way. I, don't, I wouldn't have to live here. I could go somewhere else. But I just don't see the point. A village between the mountains, working together to write the next chapter of its story. In Undredal, Norway, I'm Eric Benninghoff. Who spent on for a day fall on a tea, I for a day fall on a tea, men croak out spring the new allery, I for a fall to real to roll to roll.